Welcome back to Men and the City. In today's video, we are going to talk about the fall of tyrants. But more specifically, this video is a warning. It's as muscular a warning as I think I can muster to alarm you to what I believe is imminent. And that is a very serious financial crisis that is ongoing and I think the next leg down or the next um, crash or series of events is about to unfold this fall. Over the last several years, I have been all over the world. I have lived or visited or spent extended amounts of time in Asia and places like Hong Kong and Bangkok. I have lived in coastal cities in the United States like Miami or out in Los Angeles. I have been throughout Europe in uh, major cities like Paris and Lisbon, Portugal, or in smaller cities like Prague and uh, Wroclaw in Poland. And what I have seen, what I've noticed, and certainly I'm not the only one, is that there are major cracks in the legacy global financial system and beyond in, you might say, the global order as we understand it today. And those cracks are beginning to spread. And I think that a major event, a liquidity event, a financial event, is beginning in the bond market. Now, if you, in your nine to five or what have you, think that everything is fine and that the authorities have everything under control, uh, you're certainly inclined to believe that. Um, this may not be the video for you. But for those of you that sense that there's more going on in the world today, that we might be on the cusp of profound or spectacular change, and that the fireworks of civilizational upheaval are beginning to light up the sky, this is the video for you. The global bond market is about $120 trillion worth. At least that's what's circulating around. Now, who knows how many untold hundreds of trillions of dollars that actually represents, but $120 trillion is about six times the size of the New York Stock Exchange at about $20 trillion. And it is the bond market that lubricates the engines of the global financial system and specifically the U.S. bond market and U.S. Treasury bonds. Well, over the last 12 months, in stark contrast to the previous 20 years, the bond market has soared to unimaginable heights even six months ago. And this is completely unsustainable, and I would use the word dangerous. And it's dangerous because there is so much volume of debt, not just in the United States or in China or in major economies, but pervasive in the world today, that even tiny incremental shifts in yields or interest rates and uh, a fall of bond values as a result, or a depreciating value of US Treasury bonds, which is the linchpin of the system. It, it is the collateral held by major financial institutions around the world. Even tiny movements are dangerous or can cause asymmetric events. And we're not seeing minor movements. We're seeing major shifts. And, and importantly, we're seeing volatility, which is to say we're seeing major movements up and movements down. Now, volatility itself is a problem because the central banks around the world at the same time are combating inflation. They're combating recessionary pr pressures. They're combating a, a global financial system that is far more complex and dynamic and convoluted and therefore fraught with peril than at any time in the last hundred years. Compounding this issue are changes in the geopolitical environment. And that is to say that there is a growing legion of nations around the world that are disenchanted more than a little bit or fundamentally disillusioned with the U.S. financial system or the U.S. as a world reserve currency. And without getting into the details of why that is the case, I think it is unwise for Americans or Westerners in general, folks that live in Germany or the United Kingdom or France, to ignore this growing coalition. 
of some 80 countries around the world, some of whom are in the BRICS, some of whom are in the, the GCC, some of whom are in Eurasia, some of whom are in Latin America, so forth and so on, it would be extremely unwise to ignore these tectonic plates that are shifting away from the US dollar and its hegemony. Now, at any moment, even now, within minutes or hours of this recording, such a trigger could initiate what I believe is going to be this financial Vesuvius. But I think it's gonna happen this fall. And when it happens, my suspicion is that governments will fall. I believe that governments in the United Kingdom, in Germany, in France, and yes, in the United States, are completely unprepared for this financial event, for this liquidity crisis, which is going to generate an acute shortage of government capital to pay for an enormous amount of dependence or government programs or runoff ecosystems that all emanate from the United States government and its outrageous spending on a year over year basis. And specifically, the yields in the Bank of Japan or in Japanese markets um, inside the Eurozone in the Bunds market, which is the, the German bond market, or in the United Kingdom, which is still today one of the most important financial hubs in the world. These yields are moving at such a pace and at such a rate that I do not believe they can be arrested. Now, there are many uh, very smart people who have more expertise, you might say, in this subject than I do, who are assuming they are adamant that no such move will be permitted by the central banks who are in control, fundamentally or otherwise, of the bond markets. This is a fundamentally flawed view of the power of central banking, but also of the psychology of what's happening in the world. It ignores some of these broader shifts that I've already mentioned, but it also seems to ignore what I believe is going to happen. And that is to say that if the central banks have to move in any significant fashion to deal with this crisis, and they would do so by buying a lot of these bonds, by bailing out these governments. If they do that, their credibility will evaporate and it will only communicate to the marketplace that our um, indebtedness, that this fiscal cliff that we are almost certainly headed for is even more serious than previously thought. And I believe that that is exactly what's going to happen. Now the word crisis is a Greek word and it means point of decision. And what this uh, financial Vesuvius is going to provoke, is going to necessitate are a series of very tough decisions. And those decisions are not going to be well received by a population that believes uh, either through ignorance or through uh, willful delusion that central authorities are in control of the situation. Um, it is going to turn their faith in the system completely upside down. And what does that mean? That means that pensions are going to be cut. It means that government contracts are going to be canceled. It means that programs that huge numbers of people depend upon, whether it's Medicaid or food stamps or welfare, are going to be cut substantially in a very short term. And that will lead to the fall of governments. Something similar to, to this happened in the United Kingdom in the fall of 2022, not that long ago. And so in Great Britain, you had three prime ministers in the span of about 90 days. Something like that, but much worse, is imminent. You're going to see presidents, chancellors, and prime ministers more likely than not resign. And entire governments will probably lose control as a result. And the governments that, that succeed them will likely fall apart as well because the system is so racked with debt, it's so corrupt and hopelessly inefficient, as most of us know, whether we work inside of it or we don't, that this is going to force a point of decision in which the truth, um, the truth of a lot of these IOUs or these guarantees of uh, government services and so forth are going to be reneged upon. 
And that will change our countries permanently and it will change the world. And the consequences of this for the dollar will likely be dire. There will be outflows. There will be a mass exodus out of the US dollar as a result. And what the world looks like on the other side of that is very difficult to predict. You know, forecasting in general is often a hazardous affair. But it is my view that this process, this unwinding, this massive indebtedness has begun to give already, which is why I don't think this is a forecast at all. If anything, this is an early warning. This is uh, um, a weatherman telling you that a hurricane is coming just off the shore. All that is to say that now is the time to take action. Now is the time to raise as much capital as you can. Now is the time to pay off what debts you can. Now is the time to prepare mentally and otherwise, to scrutinize uh, or more carefully evaluate your financial system in ways perhaps you haven't uh, in your entire life. Now is the time to do that. Because one, one um, important note here is that when markets begin to move, they tend to move very quickly and they tend to move ubiquitously. In other words, uh, when this liquidity event strikes, it's very likely it's going to strike everywhere and it's going to strike at the same time. And a lot of people are not going to make it to the exit when that happens, meaning they may not be able to get money out of, out of banks. Uh, they may not be able to adjust their livelihoods in time um, before this, this financial torrent, torrent occurs. This is uh, going to trigger a massive adjustment. Our, our lives, our livelihoods are going to change. And in many respects, for those of us that are paying attention, those changes have already started. There are tent cities spreading in every major city across the United States. And similar bouts of poverty are spreading in the United Kingdom and France and other parts of Western Europe. This is a big problem. This is not normal. Um, it has unfortunately been, I think, ignored or suppressed and it has become the new normal for, for those of us that have been very successful inside the nine to five corporate bubble. But what's happening outside that bubble is uh, extremely alarming and it's moving at a very fast uh, rate. All that is to say, however, that I think the future is going to be better than the past and that this financial crisis, this liquidity event is necessary in that process. We need to wash away a lot of the corruption and the inefficiency and the poison that doesn't work anymore. That's, that's been unsustainable for a long time. So um, this fall, I believe this event is going to happen. And I think that governments are going to fall as a result and the world will change. Stay tuned for more and we'll talk soon.